This is B8, and B8 has two techniques featured in it. We have pieced and we have applique. So all these eight pieces in the background are pieced, and then these are applique on. So I've got my pieces here. What we do is baste, obviously. These, I'm going to pick a direction and do them all the same. I'm going to hold them in all the same direction, and then I'm going to baste them, like one, two, three, four. Same thing here and here. I'm going to do the same thing with these as well. I'm going to pick a direction, put them all in the same orientation, and baste them all exactly the same. That way, if there's any pinwheeling needs to be done, it'll automatically happen because it's on four different directions. So these, I'm going to gathering stitch base these and then come back and thread base them to real tight with the edges. They pull them tight and then I can applique them on. So two choices. You can either base these, then applique, and then put it in the block, or you can make the block and then applique. For my tastes, I think it's a little easier to base these and then applique the footballs onto them and then put them in the block. So that's what I'll do. I'll go ahead and base these black pieces and baste all of the footballs and then I can get to applique. So I've got my footballs basted and I've basted my black pieces. I've also taken a white mechanical pencil and made a very faint line. I used this one made a very faint line from point to point. So I have a line to put the applique pieces on. So what I'm gonna do then is, this tip here is a little floppy because it's, you know, not done yet. But I'm gonna put it on, I'll put each point on the line and try to center it, with, you know, like have the same amount of black on each end. And then I'll staple it down and then I'll applique these on each corner. So here's the best way to see this that I can describe since there's four pieces. I've had four different stages. So the first thing I did was I stapled this down and then that would give me access to uh, then applique underneath it. So then I applique underneath it, make sure that the tags go under and look smooth and all that. Then the next thing I do is take out the staple. I just take my stiletto and pry it from the back and gently pull forward. Once this paper is out and the quilt is assembled and it's, you know, quilt is steamed a little bit, the holes will go away, don't worry about that. And then, and then I go and take out all the basting. So yeah, right now you can see all the holes, but they do end up disappearing after the quilt is. And if you're wondering how to get this paper out, because I get that question a lot, I do have an applique video that covers it in detail. But what you do, is when you assemble the whole block and then the block is surrounded by other blocks. So this paper has to be fully surrounded before you can take it out. But you're done, let's say you're done, you take this paper out and then we have this fabric with this in it. So then what you do underneath here, so pretend this is the back, you'll see the stitches right here. And so what you do is you leave a seam allowance and just make a cut or in some of these I just make a slit or just, I give myself a little maneuvering space and then I take my stiletto and pry the paper out of there and that way you'll have both layers with the paper. But the trick is when you take this paper out underneath here, leave a seam allowance between the stitches and then get under the fabric and pry out that piece of paper and you'll be good to go. So I'm gonna finish this one, I gotta stitch this one down yet, but these I'm just gonna take the basing and the staples out and then I can work with the yellow points. Okay, so I've got my yellow tips basted. The next thing to do is to assemble the block. And what I'm gonna do, because these have nice right angles, I'm gonna put these together in pairs like that and then I'll connect the star and then I'll be able to put the corners in. So let me go ahead and connect the yellow pieces together. So I've got the yellow points all assembled. Because of the way this works, I did go ahead and use my yellow matching thread for this, but the black is what I need when there's yellow and black. 
So the next thing to do would be to add the corners. So I've attached the one corner and that's what I did is I started here on one end. So like this, this where I started on one end and then I went to about there, tied off. Came back over here and then I'm gonna meet to over there. And this is because I wanna make sure that my points are exactly where they need to be. So I'm in the process of attaching this one and then I'll be able to attach the other two. I just wanted to specify how I do that to make sure that these points end up right on the edge. If they don't end up right on the edge, you're gonna notice because when the sashing goes on, it will either cut it off or it won't be touching. So make sure you're real picky about this particular point because they will show very, very distinctly if they're not correct. So I've got all four corners connected to the center section and now my B8 block has been completed.